Bally TV and House of Vines in defense of the arts. <laughs> Bally TV. Hello, it's me, Joe, from the band Idols. And I'm in the house of vans, home of skating and chess at really fucking weird angles. Um, I'm here to play you some music with new friends and old. And in defense of the arts, um, I hope you enjoy it. House of Vans, Bay TV, you already know what it is. Coming up, the Bristolian impresarios, Idols is. <laughs> Katie J. Pearson. You are fraud. They are lethal, lethal animals. I was really angry at the time. Surprise. <laughs> New heart, Ruby Rock. I feel really at home in a way where it's just like, ah. Let's <laughs> <laughs> put that down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deep time. Shout out to all dead people. OK, um, cool, death shot. Right, well, next time I spiral, I'll give you girls a call. We all go out. <laughs> right. <laughs> Slow time. <laughs> You never fucking answer my calls, so maybe now you will. Oh, yeah, hold on. I answered your <laughs> call six in the morning, and I was about to go again. <laughs> I apologise. Next up, me and my monkey boys singing some singy songs. Hey, hey, hey. Costume change. Six foot three, she hurt. 
Bad at TV. Next up, KJ Pearson, over in the bowl. Whoop, whoop. It's not unheard of to feel like climbing up the walls. You just need them to work out what you want. It could be a sign on the highway, a cloud in the night sky. But hey, you, I get you. AJ Pearson. <laughs> <laughs> They're new to this. Yeah. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, good, thanks. How are you? I'm all right. Did you enjoy <laughs> playing in the bowl? It felt quite thrilling. I think from like doing no shows to doing a show in the bowl was like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big vibe. Yeah. Train. There's a train above <laughs> us. We're under Waterloo Station. So if you hear anything untoward, it's just a train. So don't panic, <laughs> viewers. <laughs> Yeah, this is, um, this is my... We were just saying, off-camera, you're my first in-real-life 
guest. I know. It's so thanks very much. My pleasure. And you were saying interviews. Do you like interviews? I think as I've, the more I do them, the, the easier they get. But I think talking to like people that are your peers and that do this, like are kind of doing the music, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. I guess that also my agenda is 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 different. Like I'm not yeah. I'm not going to be like you're a fraud. <laughs> yeah. um, but so, what do you feel you represent as an artist? And do you think that comes out in your interviews, or do you think your music does it for you? I don't know. I guess for me, it's just being authentic as possible. Yeah. Um, and just like just being really being as friendly and nice as I can. I think that's my kind of thing. I was saying just after your bowl performance. <laughs> It's a good um, hangover cure, I think. Oh, thank um, you. I haven't been hungover in a while. Nice. But yeah, um, what do you think your music represents? Well, I hope it represents natural songwriting that is kind of just do music for the right reasons, like my own songs, and just hopefully a calming presence. I think I want my music to kind of help people through stuff in a subtle way. Art and music's vital. I mm. think, for survival as, yeah. a, as a society or whatever. Mm. I, I spoke to Jim, our guy, Jim Connolly, behind the camera there about doing the show as a special, because Rishi Sunak thought he'd try and use meritocracy in the arts as, like, some sort of shaming where we have to show our worth beyond music and art and retrain. But I'm a musician and that is my job. And I think shit, like, from the Conservative government and Rishi Sunak, making us feel like we need to retrain because they're not willing to give the arts any money. Fuck you, Ricky <laughs> Zubak, wherever you are. <laughs> yeah, it's fuckery. And, like, I think it's important to talk about it in front of the camera. So, as an artist, out of ten, how worthy are you? No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> as, as, an, as an artist, what do you think you want to give the world? I think, for me, I think if I can make a living and have some longevity, that is something that's fantastic, but also use my platform as my life experiences and the way that I write music to kind of do as much good as I can. And I think people that do music like us, I think we have, we have you know, if we can get to a certain point, we have such a voice and we can use that voice to do good for other people is also something that I, find, I think is so important. I love your music and I love what you do. Thank you. And that's because you, you take me to your world. Mm. And like, I think it's a really cool thing that you're doing. Just trying to make it see, like, make people realise that you know it is accessible and it, you can do it. And even though, as you're saying, the government are kind of scrapping all creative courses and making it so much more of a smaller threshold, I think, you know, I didn't go to university. Like, I went straight into music at like 18. And I think, you know, if you really want to do it, you can, you know, get logic and get at it. Because I think it is achievable. Mm. Yeah. I don't want to go into the whole COVID bullshit, but when's the last time you played? March 13th, 2020. That's specific? It's like my birthday on the 12th, and then everything started looking a bit sketchy. And then the next day was a gig, and no one was hugging, and people were like elbow thinging, and I was like, something's happening. Mm. And then it did, didn't it? So. <laughs> you were talking to me before about what you've been doing during lockdown, work wise. Mm. So you're working. At the, the well. At the well. Laundrette and Cafe. So. That's in Bristol. Oh, which yes. is a cafe laundrette. <laughs> I actually wrote right. a song in there. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I wrote Mercedes Marxist in there. Really? In the inside? Doing my laundry. Really? Oh, yeah. I love that. <laughs> I was really angry at the time. <laughs> nice, well. Surprise. <laughs> but for you, you went back to work, like most of my mates have, who are musicians. Yeah. And these, these guys who are all in stuff that, you know, a lot of people had to stop in yeah. our industry. So, like, how do you feel now as a sense of moving forward. I think I understand that it's just all part of it. I think when you're, when you're kind of out of practice, you know, the insecurities can creep back and you think, oh, God, like, can I do this? But mm. I think as soon as you get back on the stage and you're, like, three shows down, I think things start to kind of fall back into place. Because I think when you do start again, you do get a bit imposter syndrome. You're like, oh, my God, wait, I work in a laundrette. I'm doing coffees, but, oh, God, but I'm doing this and I'm getting paid on Radio 6 and, oh, and I'm making coffee. Oh, I'm on the radio. Mm. So I think it is, there is such a kind of limbo about it, but I think I'm looking forward to having a bit more stability in my music again, which would be really nice. Absolutely, yeah. touring. Fuck, I'm, I'm jealous. <laughs> Next up, so you're a veggie? Yes, yeah. I noticed your cow tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to get one of the, the butcher's diagram, though. Oh, fair. Yeah, but yeah. I'm, not, like, I'm not mad into meat like I was. I, I, my, I've got a daughter who's two, 
and the mother and I decided to bring her up veggie. We're both, well, I'm a meat eater, m m the mother is not anymore. Yeah. Well, we decided to bring uh, our daughter up veggie because I think it's a bigger choice to choose to eat meat, so to allow her that choice when she's mm. ready. Yeah. Anyway, I love cows, but I want to know why you love cows. I think, I don't know. I, I, this is a <laughs> sick question. I'm going to get promoted for this. <laughs> I think... It might, I think it must be because when I was younger, my dad used to take me and my brother Rob down to South Devon for like six weeks. But yeah, there's loads of lovely cows there. So I think just from day one, just I love cows. I didn't used to eat them, but not anymore. Right. Um, and I just, I just never really beautiful animals. My mate, well not a mate, school friend, got kicked out of uni for bringing a cow back to his halls, and it died trying to back, backing it up into a lift. <gasps> It yeah. died. How did it die? Like just had a heart attack. No, that's so sad. Yeah, yeah. Well, he got he got kicked out of uni, so. It's... Oh God! Because I feel like. <laughs> Imagine waking oh, up with that God. hangover. Like, what the fuck? Because also. Have like... I done? Oh, that's actually crazy. Did you know that cows kill more people in America than sharks? Yeah, they are lethal, lethal animals. <laughs> kill the cows or chicken? Look. <laughs> Eat more cows. Um, <laughs> all right, sick. Oh fuck! I haven't offered you a drink. Do you want a drink? You've got one there, but do you want a cold one? I've got loads of chocomel, which is the best. Yeah, I love chocomel. Chocolate milk Let's do it. in the world. Hey! Marshmallow, hold on. <laughs> they've, they've been here since the start of lockdown, but I think they're all right. Yeah, nice. Let's go. Oh my God, look at this. Wow. If we had a glass. Do you want a, do you want a float? <laughs> Should we do, do it? it? Should we do Fuck it? Fuck it. It's Let's not... do it. There you go. Cheers, guys. And then... <laughs> this is so strange. Uh, Should I drop this in like that? Fuck yeah. Hey. Look at that. Only the best at House of Vans. Cheers to everyone. Thank you so much. My pleasure. How's your chocomel? It's bloody lovely, actually. I'm loving it. I'm happy. It's all I need. Anything for Rishi Sunak? Fuck you, Rishi Sunak. Katie J. Pearson. <laughs> hey. Bally TV. What's that? New Harubi Ra, up next. of an angel when you lay eyes on me. Remember the days when I went down south to see you? Two hours 
promise to get there in 336 to leave you. Do you like me talking to you like this? Do you like me talking to you like this? Because I know you love it when I come round. Run your fingers through my hair, through my hair. Get your words out my head. machine of joy spitting out, keep spitting. This rebel plays up to me, the path of least resistance will take you far. I can hear the sound of a steady beat, the sound of the march, 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 and the sound of I hate you begun. Now I can't say I love you, I can't say anything at all. I just want to touch you up and pull you down to me and know that I'm the goddess. And now, just a little reminder while we're here. It's a conversation, a celebration of the importance of art and music in our lives, and also to appreciate being under train stations with our loved ones. Nuha, Ruby Ra. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Joe. Do you want a chocomel? Chocomel? Yeah, sure. Chocomel. They're yeah, fucking good. Yeah, yeah, You're not that vegan. sounds great, man. I've not had one of them for a long time. Oh, you know yeah, chocomel? Yeah, yeah, no, I know. They're, aren't they like mostly found in Europe? Yes. Sadly, um, well. It's Cicimel in Belgium and France and chocomel yeah. in Holland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. where I know them from. Um, <laughs> oh, Amazing. I see what's shout, going on. Yeah. <laughs> No, 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 no. We're not even sponsored. This isn't brand placement. Like, I just fucking love chocomel. This Chocomel. Yeah, genuine yeah, yeah, love like, for chocomel. You know those sports bottles that you put on your bike? Yeah, yeah. They gave me one of those once. I don't know why. Really? Like, yeah, who the fuck really... drinks chocomel with a cycling? We've got tequila and fizzy water. We've if got you tequila? Want. Yeah, do you want tequila? Mate, I love tequila. Sick. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> this, this is Don Julio 1942. As much as I love choco milk. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put that down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you nice. for doing this. Let us know what you think. Um, oh, that is lovely. It's good, isn't it? You can sip it yes, and it's it, delicious. It's a sipping tequila. It is a sipping tequila. It's really delicious. Good, good, good. I'm flashing my pants at everyone. Yeah, I, I have that problem with, <laughs> with my Mac days as well. <laughs> it's after 12, for those of you watching at home. Uh, this isn't morning drinking, just in case any of you are judgmental oh, yeah, yeah, pricks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and if you did judge, don't, don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, um, I'll go on. I'm nervous around you. Oh, really? Now, now. <laughs> it's, like, that, it's that red Mac. <laughs> I think it's the red Mac. It's this, not the Mary this... J. Blige hat. No. I love that. Oh, no, no. It is a good hat, isn't it? I, it's, it's not the Mac. Hat. I'll tell you what it's it is. It's not the Mac and it's, it's not the hat. No, because we met backstage, we kind of chatted for a minute, and, like, you're very um, lovely and welcoming. But then when I see you on stage, you got something that I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? It's a natural confidence. Do you? Because like, I I don't have I I don't believe in myself in the same way other people do. I think certain people on stage like yourself are like really outgoing. Well, thanks. And, like, but are you like that in real life? In day to day life, I am an outgoing person, but I'm not. I'm not an. At least I don't think I am like an in-your-face kind of person, whereas I'm pretty like there <laughs> when I'm when I'm playing with people. Pre-COVID, mm. I was always pretty there with people. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel really like at home in a way where it's just like, ah, this is where I can let out some things that I don't normally that maybe I feel quite inhibited to let out otherwise. 
maybe not in Sparky, the song that the one that I just mm. sort of played, but sometimes in some of the other tracks, I scream a lot. Yeah. And that feels so fucking good. And I'm just like, right, I'm gonna make the fucking most of this. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it took me a long time to find live performance as an outlet, because I was just fucking mm. nervous. Yeah. How long have you felt like it's an outlet? I think it's felt like it's properly an outlet since I've started being a solo artist. Mm. I don't have a band, I don't have the white noise of like a massive like six piece, like roaring punk band or something. And playing to a backing track, I used to have huge judgments on it. And it would be just like, I have to make sure that it's not just me doing a karaoke set. Right. You know, it's like, it has, there needs to be like the most me that I can put in this, basically. Mm. Sometimes when you're in that place and you're just like, this is the most vulnerable place I'm putting myself in, and like playing to backing tracks, which I'd never done before. And I was like, right, I better like really fucking own this place that I've just put myself in. So from when I started doing that, I would say it was just like, you know, like, release the demons time and it's like just be really grounded let it all out like you know it's just there'd been like quite a rough period in my life before that that like made me go very very in and very in yeah a, in a non-creative way in a non-creative way in a non like communicative way really with like people in a like in a way that it was just like i don't know if you've been in that place but you've Felt like I was like at the end of my life somehow, and it was just like I don't, I'm done. Like I don't have really that much else to like give. And then started to do, and I was just like, all right, I'm gonna write some new songs. I'm gonna start doing this thing, and it was very much like a kind of a way to help myself out of a hole. Mm -hmm. But then it became like in a performance sense, this like physical place that I could just like go and just fucking scream in. And I could like, you know, I could, I could practice the, the sort of holding my ground. I could practice the just kind of like, you know, I could kind of like, you know, fill myself up again somehow. But I think it's, yeah, it kind of all, the feeling really comfortable with it. I think came when the solo thing started, but especially when I was like, I'm gonna do this totally on my own. <laughs> but I think when you're playing as well and there's no other people on stage with you and you're in a room full of people, it's like, you know, your gang are normally like the people that you're on stage with, you know? It's just like, it's just like you and them. And then if it's just you and that's it, then it's like everyone in the room, it's like, no, this is us. It's that's like, cool. No, these are, these are my people. These yeah. are my people. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, that's yeah. been nice. Kind of like they're your, um, you know, like where you have those, Awful group exercise where you fall backwards. <laughs> you know, you you got to fall backwards onto your crowd rather than your, yeah. your band. I wouldn't trust my Imagine band. Imagine the, yeah, the move out of the way. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it a go one time, see what happens. Don't. <laughs> well, I, I fell, I, I, uh, it was Concord 2 in Brighton. Yeah. And I just walked off the stage. <laughs> yeah, just thought there was I, more floor. Yeah, it didn't hurt. But yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. I genuinely like, did like a really long split. <laughs> but no, it just, I just felt like a prick. <laughs> Magic. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Thanks for having me. This is, this is, yeah, I could carry on and just hang out with you drinking yeah. more tequila, but you've got things to do. So, yeah, I'll, um, I'll leave you to it. Thank thanks you. for having me, mate. Thank you very much, and thanks for your performance. New Heart, Ruby Rock. Okay. <laughs> Bye, TV. Next up, Deep Tan, over there.
French City Arts. Body TV. Right. Deep turn. <laughs> I'll introduce. Sorry, this is Deep Town. Lucy, Wafa, and Celeste. Hey. Um, and do you want a drink of yes. Eva? Oh, yes, please. Do you, want, uh, you said yes like an alcoholic. Yes. <laughs> Not alcoholic, as in an alcoholic. An Do you like tequila? Drink. Yes, yes an alcoholic drink. Do you like tequila? Yes. That's all we've got. Perfect. Sick. Okay. In fact, can I pass them to you? Yeah. Is that all right? Yes. And then. These are fancy glasses. Where did you get them, Joe? I feel um, someone's relative died, uh, so we just went around and got all the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, cool. Death nice. shots. Nice. Yeah. Death Shout out to um, all dead people. <laughs> There's we one. Should, we should pour one up for yeah, the dead hands. Yeah, Except for Prince Philip. <laughs> okay. Cheers. Sorry, I'm, Cheers. I'm an actual alcoholic, so I can't Slouch drink. It. Slouch it. Right. Mm. Oh my god, delicious. Yeah. Yeah, have you ever had tequila or... rose? I have not. It's um, basically like, you know, like mini milks, the ice cream. Yes, it's like I, that, one of my favourites. It's like that, but tequila in a drink. No. And it tastes it's like delicious. strawberry. Yeah, it's yeah, nice. It's really but nice. it's tequila. Yeah. Right, well, next time I spiral, I'll give you girls a call. We all go out on them. <laughs> um, okay. Tequila Rose. Um, so. Did you like the performance? Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was really fun. Like, when did you last play? February. It was the Shuffle like, World. February, Feb yeah. Yeah, February, February, February 2020, 20, just yeah. before the pandemic. Yeah. Rolled on in. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck me. It's a long time. Shackle world. Well. Mm. Yeah. Um, start with, I, I, I asked uh, Katie J. Pearson the same question, but I thought it was an interesting point because this whole thing was started as like a reaction when Rishi Sunak was talking about us all retraining because, like, you know, because conservatives. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but like the question was really like about worth as, a, as an entity. Obviously, Katie J. Pearson's a solo artist and writes all their own stuff. Like, do you have like a, this is what we want people to feel at our shows, this is what we want to get from our music when they listen to our records or? When we first started writing together, the music we were writing was kind of a bit more slow and atmospheric. And then when we started taking it live, yeah. we really felt the energy was a lot more fun for us when we were playing kind of darker, faster driving songs. So. As far as energy is concerned, that's kind of found its way into our writing. And the lyrics are quite, mm. can be quite political as well. Yeah. yeah. They always seem to go in that direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think it that's a, do, do, you, do you have a sense of purpose with your, obviously, it, there's a, I, I would say it's an archaic thing. There's, there's less responsibility for men in music to be a representative yeah. of something, do you know? Like, um, as an industry, it's just like, Old fashioned like that, and it's changing, and I like whatever. So, but do you feel like you, you, you want the responsibility of representation and to, and they're like your liberal leanings or however you write your songs? I don't think we feel necessarily a responsibility to kind of do that. Yeah, it's well, just, it's it naturally like, kind of yeah. does it's that. It's not like an aim. We're not like thinking, oh, we're gonna do this. It just, we're just flowing with it, and then mm -hmm. it turns out to where it goes. But do you write democratically? Is it something you're collective with? Yeah, like when, when we're jamming, we'll kind of, 
we'll sort of find find some riffs first of all that sort of work together, and then we find like feel out what that mood is, and then we'll just kind of talk it out, and we'll sort of say, okay, this feels very strange. What what is in our heads at the moment that could be very strange, and then we just kind of yeah, it just sort of feeds in that way. So you discuss it. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, at it. length. Oh, for like, cool. at for length. Like the, yeah, yeah, for the, the themes of the songs, definitely. Wow, like, that's great. Because yeah. I don't talk to the band about it. I don't care what they think. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I love it. But, yeah, sick. Oh well, amazing. Thank you so much for coming. Anyway. Thanks for having us. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, Thanks nice for having us. us. Thank you. Deep time. <laughs> For any of you at home who are worried about my costume change, um, I, this is my stage get-up because I'm a sweaty boy. And before I was wearing my non-stage get-up, but we're going to go on. I'd like to introduce you to my friend yeah. and now colleague, yeah. a slow tie! <laughs> Hello. Good for you. Hello. Oh, good what for can you. I say? How are you doing? I'm good. I think I'm happiest I've been in a long while, I think. Yeah? Yeah. Free. What a feeling. 
It's freedom. Beautiful feeling. Do you want one of these tequilas? Yeah, go on. This is right. what we're at. Excuse me, I think Deep Town have been at it. Bloody Fuck hell. Fuck you, Mill. All right, so I think it's Nuha. Oh, I'm only a lightweight. Is that Choco Mill? Yeah. I like Choco Mill, yeah. Everyone likes Choco Mill. It's the best Choco Mill in the world. It's from man. When you go to Amsterdam, it's like the drink, it's like the drink of choice. It is, yeah, and... Get a high, eat, drink some fucking other pastry. Get high? Yeah. On what, Ty? A life. <laughs> Good In Amsterdam, man. <laughs> you really are a poet, aren't you? No, I'm, I'm a retired poet. <laughs> Congratulations on your retirement. Is that why yeah. you feel free? You know, like life, life gives you lemons. You make lemonade, build a stand, sell it all, and then retire. Fuck off to the countryside. Yeah, yeah. Live, yeah, yeah, yeah. live at La Vida Loca, isn't it? So where are you living now? Northampton still. Yeah? I got my first ass. Congratulations. Thank you, it's fucking... Did you have to talk to estate agents? I tell you what, I went, yeah, cos the house I bought, I knew the girl that lived there, and I used to go around and get drunk when I was young. I remember being there one night, and I said, oh, one day, I'll get a house like this. And they all laughed, like, they all rem I remember them all laughing. And then I bought that exact house. Fuck yeah, that's amazing. So, yeah, 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 so... That's cool. And I made it better, so, you know what I mean? Well, you're in it. Yeah. So, freedom, how does that feel like? Fucking, <laughs> I can do what I want. Because yeah. I've always, like, I've, I've only known you a short while. Always, like, super busy, super focused on it from when I've met. Yeah. And even when we were supposed to be sitting still at backstage at festivals, you're bouncing off the fucking walls. Yeah, we was having a good time, innit? Frank Zappa vibes as well. You weren't on anything. You just you've yeah. got a lot of energy. And you're... So how have you been channeling that over the last year? Just still music, I think. Mm -hmm. If there's no music, I end up doing stuff I probably regret or mm -hmm. just get carried away with myself. So just music, trying to read, even though I'm like a one-page reader, and mm -hmm. then I put it down, and then, yeah, painting, we're just painting doing everything, yeah. I'm so, not no Leonardo da Vinci, but I'm fucking just for a paint on something, isn't it? And then, amazing. Yeah. So is it like, so I, I've, I've been having this conversation with the other guests. Yeah. And um, just talking like this, this show was kind of a response to when it's kind of old news now, but it's, it's always going to be relevant when you're under a right-wing government, especially at times like this where the poor are infinitely poorer than they've ever been and the rich are infinitely richer than they've ever been and in between is this gap where there's a sense of isolation, yeah. especially in a, in a, like, a highly wound situation yeah. where people feel separated and I think music, art, culture, whatever you want to call it, keeps people linked yeah, yeah, yeah. and like keeps people interested and grounded but like it's kind of what I've asked everyone but I, I, like I'm interested because I think people make assumptions about rappers yeah, yeah what is it you want your music and your art to do to people and or to be remembered of just I think the aim of life is to you're born, you learn, and you're like you pass. You either see, either have kids, you pass on your knowledge, or like it's about sharing and discovering and communicating and coming together. So my thing is not even on a music thing. It's just being able to take what I learn and give my opinions, so people can either steer me in the right direction or I can change their viewpoint. I think with music, it's always to spark a discussion, like. People are people at the end of the day, so they're influenced how they're influenced. But I think it's a responsibility to just share my viewpoint and kind of mainly just bring some kind of joy, even though a lot of my music's miserable, and help people who are from a less fortunate place or haven't had the opportunity to see that they can do whatever they want, they can be who they want to be, they haven't got to follow no rules or guidelines of the way the world expects him to be. It's just be yourself and don't give a fuck and do it with a smile on your face and just push through a negative time, really. It's funny you say that. In the short time I've known you, like, you know, people have asked, oh, what's, you know, what's he like? And <laughs> yeah. I'm like, exactly as his music is, yeah. joyous, 
idiosyncratic. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> definitely. There's a real sense of like jubilant defiance, but also like, yeah, you. I can't empathise with your upbringing and where you're yeah, from, yeah, yeah. even not just like from where, but like class yeah, yeah, yeah. and all that shit. But there's a real sense of um, inclusivity that I can learn from, and I did learn from you. Fucking, you're a very inclusive and joyous person, which is cool. Yeah. But you said at the start of this that you feel like you're free, which is kind of like, yeah. what do I do next? Where you're actually like, oh, fucking, I've completed level one of Tyrone. I feel, yeah, I feel like. It's like a game, like life is a game. You go through trying to find that, the missing piece or whatever. And mm. then I'm definitely content with my feelings and my understanding of myself at this period. But that's not to say I don't believe there's more to discover or more to see, because mm. if you only, it's like how I say I read one page of a book, I can't understand the full book until I get to the end, I suppose. Mm. And even then, I don't think anyone gets to 40 or 50 or however old and they're like, I'll figure it all out. Like, mm. now I just sit and have a tequila on the beach and... Good choice. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm just happy. I think it took me 26 years to get to a place where I felt like waking up in the morning, oh, mm. it's a good day. Definitely. But my thing is, that you make, as much as you make music for other people, you make it for yourself. Because like, mm -hmm. as long as you're happy, you'll always be happy. And there's mm. always going to be, in a world of seven billion people, there's bound to be a hundred people that feel the same way you do. So, yeah. anyway, do, have you got music that's just yours that you would never give to anyone else? I've got poetry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I write poetry a lot. And that's, some of that will always just be for me. Yeah, yeah. I think I struggled with June, the song about my daughter Agatha, because I felt like I might be cheapening the grief yeah, by yeah. making it a record that you sell, yeah, right? Because yeah. I put my mum's ashes in our first record, Brutalism. We pressed her ashes into it. Fucking. And like, but that was like something that I thought was the artistic, like that is, my mum was in that record anyway. Yeah, yeah, I made that record with, with the grieving of my mum. So I wanted to put that in. That was my artistic choice, and I'm not, never going to explain that to anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give a fuck what anyone thinks about that. But I think that's more shame. I think, for me, my role as a musician is to save my life. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was, I was near death. I've had psychotic episodes. I've been through addiction. I've, like, lost a lot of friends. I've been abusive. Um, music saved my life. And, like, the only way I can do that is by not internalising that message, yeah, yeah. by giving it to other people so that it's a release and an interaction that makes me feel part of the world. Otherwise, I feel isolated and an imposter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that imposter thing is the worst thing people can feel because everyone deserves a spot and a chance. Yeah, 100%. Mm. Like, to be part of something, that's what we all long for. Right? You're born and you're like... You go to school, even when you're in nursery or whatever, and you go and tell the kids and you're trying to play and they're like, no, <laughs> and you're like, oh, tail between your legs, <laughs> yeah, yeah. walk away crying or whatever. Yeah. And like your whole life, you're searching for a place you can belong. And I suppose my way and yourself, I believe, is the music's the key that opened the door. Exactly. And that is it. That was the. That's it. That's fucking brilliant. Thank you so oh, much. I was getting into this. And I felt like we could have. Uh... Like, we, you know. You never fucking answer my calls, so maybe now you will. No, you uh, know? <laughs> what do you mean? That's the I do answer you. Oh, yeah, hold on. I answered your call. <laughs> I answered your call at like six in the morning. When was that? You was having a fucking party and I was about to go to bed. <laughs> and you was like, speak to my mate, speak to my mate. Oh, I, I was doing yeah. A, a, my, yeah, my, my mate Slow Tie, can you speak to him? Yeah, what well, I. <laughs> <laughs> I apologise. What I meant was <laughs> um, that now I'm going to call you and we can carry on this conversation yeah. and it won't be six in the morning. Yeah, um, right, so basically now we're going to go do Model Village together, yeah? Yeah. Now, just be warned, people at home, 
Like, Ty knows the lyrics, I don't. No, nah, you've thrown me under the bus now. Nah. I don't fucking... I haven't got a clue. The lyrics are on the floor. If any of you are bothered by that, turn off now and, and like, fuck yourselves. <laughs> That's my final thought. Yeah, actually... Have a good time. Rishi Sunak, I will retrain. Um, Send if your you... fucking mail address and we'll <laughs> post you the lyrics and you can shove them up your ass. <laughs> Um, yeah, there you go. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Peace and love. <laughs> Valley TV.
Thank you to Katie J. Pearson. Nuha Rubra. Ooh. The Tan. Yeah! Idols. Idols. And thank you to Slow Time. Thank you. Bye! Where she see that?